Welcome to my Larry Pinter as you've never seen it before series of videos. Um, this video is day 13. So day 13 I wake up uh, on Mount Giles Lookout um, and I wake up to the most atmospheric uh, sort of sunrise. It's, it's amazing. Um, yeah, the, the light and the clouds and uh, yeah, the clouds um, of uh, Mount Giles and, and uh, Mount Sonda. Yeah, they're really, really atmospheric. Um, I then um, descend from there and um, go into the really, really beautiful uh, Ormiston Gorge. Uh, so get there and uh, yeah, enjoy the delights of the cafe there and um, have a you know, bit of a rest that afternoon. So yeah, sit back, enjoy this video and uh, yeah, if you like it and you want to see uh, how I went on the subsequent uh, days, yeah, press subscribe. Enjoy. awake for hours last night and it was absolutely amazing um, yeah I just lay here uh, a moonless cloudless uh, um, night and just stared at the stars for hours and it was just I can't describe just mind-blowingly beautiful <laughs> um, and you know without fail every night I've seen you know some sort of uh, shooting star or something entering Earth's atmosphere or something um, and yeah just can't believe uh, just how frequent that happens I don't know whether we're going through a some sort of uh, cosmic sort of event happening hap at the moment or um, but um, yeah there's just lots and lots of activity up there so from a very atmospheric uh, Mount Giles lookout um, I'm going to head off soon um, it's looking uh, quite amazing it looks um, I think it looks almost like Scotland down there um, yeah, so off to Ormiston's um, and uh, yeah, uh, much needed shower and uh, be able to wash my clothes and have a fresh decent meal which would be nice. Um, so uh, let's head on, yeah, you can see Mount Sonda um, yeah, covered in clouds, um, has been all morning, yeah, pretty, pity the people who went up there this morning to catch the sunrise. Still, I'm sure it would have been quite an experience. Right, let's crack on. Okay, this is the other camping site on Mount Giles Lookout. So it's, um, I think it's unofficially called Hermit's Hideaway. There's a few camping pads and it's a bit more sheltered than up where I was. Some pretty cool spots actually. Yeah, 
quality spots here. Obviously well used because it's quite clear. And I know there was um, at least three people here last night. There's uh, no reception up here at um, Hermit Side Way, which I find a bit strange to be honest. Uh, I'm with Telstra, whether there's up this reception or not, I don't know. Hack's feeling so much lighter today, I'm carrying uh, just under three litres of water. Uh, when I came up, I was carrying probably seven. So I've used four overnight. I do use a lot of water. Um, I do drink a lot. I do sweat a lot. So, um, so I um, altogether actually this section I would have used, um, assuming I use these three liters, which I probably won't actually. I'll probably only use two of them. But. Um, yeah, altogether, I pro including these three litres, I would have used nine litres of water. Um, I could have um, been a lot more conservative with water, um, but um, I had the luxury of you know, being able to fill up at um, Waterfall Gorge, and uh, I, I used it. <laughs> um, yeah. So definitely something to think about is you know how much water you consume. And need, you know, maybe um, use food options that require less water, um, and uh, yeah, try and conserve it that way. Yeah, uh, with water, ultimately, it's um, an equation of just how much you're prepared to uh, carry up up the uh, up the hills, really. Uh, versus how much you want to consume or need to consume. I know a few people um, stayed at um, Waterfall Gorge and yeah, the only reason was because uh, they didn't want to carry all the water up here. Looks like there's a high route and a low route. There's a low route going down here, um, and there's a high route going across here. I took the high route, um, uh, which was uh, uh, easy enough, but the low route probably a little less scary. A couple of nice camping pads here. You've always got to be wary because uh, they can either be camping pads or ants' nests. But I'm pretty sure they're camping pads. Quite a gentle uh, descent, that one. Um, certainly more gentle than the ascent on the other side. Um, all trails um, told me when I got to the top of um, Mount Giles that uh, overall I've ascended over five kilometres since the beginning of my trail. Uh, it's actually missed a little bit where I was going up um, Brinkley's Bluff. But yeah, five kilometres. 
That's a long way. Long way up. Uh, well, this is what's uh, very unromantically referred to as base base of hill camp spot. Uh, interesting, the um, all trails uh, route had a lot less switchbacks than there are now, so they must have put in a few extra switchbacks just to make it easier. Look at these beautiful ghost guns. Aren't they beautiful? range a little less inspiring but um, still delightful uh, yeah those little finches for example or you see wildflowers you haven't seen before or you're walking through these lovely little mulga forests with the shade and looking up at the heavy tree range and seeing the rock formations up there Having one of those nearly there moments. shower of my life um, yeah it was so good <laughs> can't tell you um, and just sitting down to some um, dinner um, sleeping under a tent tonight uh, yeah, there's a few people around so uh, yeah more for privacy reasons really just to 
uh, sleep in a tent, so I suppose I might as well use it. <laughs> um, so yeah, the uh, the walk down actually was um, yeah, fairly easy actually, um, and I got back or got here at about uh, I think about uh, one one thirty. So it took about four and a half hours to get uh, down from um, uh, Mount Giles Lookout, which yeah, not too bad. Um, is fairly um, fairly warm, but yeah, yeah, quite quite an easy walk. Um, had a couple of their focaccias, so uh, yeah, they were a treat and a, a smoothie, which was really nice. Um, and uh, yeah, generally just sort of dust around and I had my food drop, so I've sorted through all of that. I've decided to kind of ditch you know a whole bunch of things that I just haven't used so far in the in the um, in the hike. So yeah, just sort of just um, and there's no forecast for rain, so I'm I'm taking a risk and um, yeah, not bringing my um, uh, poncho. So hopefully that'll be the right thing to do. Um, yeah, so just going to have have some dinner and then uh, yeah, get to bed and tomorrow we'll do the pound, which I think will be quite interesting. Um, also, yeah, listen to a sort of Parks and Wildlife um, talk just at the amphitheatre here. So yeah, that was um, yeah, reasonably interesting to hear you know what they're doing about you know feral animals and stuff like that. And um, yeah, I hadn't realised all that grass that I've been walking through today um, is buffalo grass, which is uh, introduced. Basically, it was actually introduced to control the dust in Alice Springs, and it's just taken over. So it's um, yeah, a bit of a bad pest, which they you know, are struggling to get rid of. Anyway, so um, uh, yeah, until tomorrow, I'll see you later. Bye.